Good morning. Today we tackle the skirt. I realize you can't you can't see the skirt, but um, you will eventually be able to to see the skirt. We're gonna cut the the skirt shape, and then we have to do the math for the ruffles. So that's gonna be very interesting. Yeah, and we also gotta figure out this situation because I want to take out like all of this. So I think the first thing I'm actually going to do is disconnect the, the skirt from the top and re-sew the side seams and figure out exactly how much we're taking off. So let's let's do that. Okay, I think this is actually my only editor's note and the only thing I'm going to say is that I left in a lot more of my indecision this episode just because it was like much quicker for me to film it. So I thought it was going to be a shorter episode. So I left in more of the bits that I usually cut out to save time. Yeah, so you're going to see a lot more of me like struggling to decide and just sitting there being like, what do I do? And that's just the reality of it. Don't forget, it's a documentary. Not a tutorial. It's definitely just turned into a tutorial though, but please enjoy my indecision and pain. You can see where I messed up my seam allowance, so then I had to completely re-sew the whole seam, which is so annoying now that I have to unpick it. My favorite way to unpick something is to just unstitch it right next to the back stitch on the top thread. It won't work on the bottom bobbin thread, and then just get enough unpicked to the point you can grab it and just pull it the rest of the way out. Before I unpin it, just take a ruler and draw. Okay, okay. I'm gonna take my chalk and I'm just gonna trace next to the pins on just this one side. And then I can unpin it. And then, what I'm gonna do is open it and flatten it. Okay. And then I'm gonna take this and I just wanna like square it to a pencil. Like, that is a much more drastic edge. Or, I think I'm gonna unpick the new seam on both sides, probably, and then pin it at, like, both of these, like, at one, and then put it on the dress form and see how it hangs, and then pin it at the other line and put it on the dress form and see how it hangs. Okay. I'm once again using this pen and the eraser pen um, just so it's easier for us both to see it, but, okay. I actually, before I mark anything, I want to line up the sides and, like, compare the, um, the, like, lines that I made. Because I think this side was the one, yeah, this side was much more drastic. You guys can't see shit. Okay. Yeah, so this one's line is like here. Okay, so I'm trying to line up, because I sewed this line, measuring it from the edge of the seam allowance, instead of the edge, or instead of where the this, this sewn line is. Um, I'm trying to measure it so that it lines up more, like almost, I'm lining up the new seam edge with where it should have been on the seam allowance instead. Making this line, and actually this line is gonna be square. Pretty much. Okay. So I think actually I'm just gonna sew this line. Okay, I'm gonna barely pin it together. And 
And then I'm going to transfer it to the other side. I can barely see it through the material. Okay. I'm just gonna make little marks where I can see the line. I literally can't see it up here. Hang on, I'm gonna shine my phone flashlight on it. Mm, that's not helping. Okay. I think that's enough lines to be able to copy it. Yes. Sweet. Okay. Oh geez, it was lined up so nicely. Oh, I messed it all up. Last episode, I tried not to record as much and I still ended up with a 30 minute long video. So I'm just literally gonna record everything and then struggle to cut it down again. And actually the last time I did this, I had to cut it into three episodes. So, you know what, it's fine. Um, but you are kind of in my way camera, so you only get to see half of it. Okay, I went in and I just pinned it where the last seam was after sewing both sides. And I think we have like the right amount of flowiness now where it's not too much and it's gonna like just kind of hang and droop on the bottom. So I'm gonna unpin it, take it off, sew the waist back together and then put it back on and then we'll shape the skirt. Before I sew them together, I'm gonna get rid of this excess that we don't need anymore. So I just drew the line all the way down on like the longest part and I'm gonna cut probably like an inch just in case anything like could go wrong. We're planning for the worst here, honestly, with this skirt. I'm gonna start off with a really rough general line with this chalk first. And then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna kind of fix it, I think, with a darker marker. So the first thing that I did was I took a tape measure and I measured how long I wanted that side to be on my own body before I transferred that number onto the exact side seam there. And I took my reference picture and tried to determine the approximate shape of the front of the dress. I just went over this again and again with uh, Taylor's chalk, stepping back to see how it looked and then going back in. I'm definitely trying to keep it longer for now than it eventually will be because it's always easier to take away the material than it is to add back. Okay, um, let me go in with a different color now because there's 17 different lines. I don't even think you guys can see the line. Um, cool. Uh, let's do the back, I guess. Okay, you can kind of see my line um, where I started there and then it like droops. And then the back, I remember it has this one that goes like straight down, like there's like a stray ruffle there. And then, yeah, that line is so light, but it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's just kind of super temporary there. What I'm gonna do now is cut the skirt probably like two inches below that line in like jagged choppy way if you get if you get me and then and then we'll, we'll see how that looks and pray it's always better to cut to keep more on and then have to cut more off later when i was cutting the material i was basically trying to keep as much tension as i possibly could then sliding the scissors until a bunch bunched up and then cutting Oh, 
Okay, so I can already tell that I want to move this over slightly, I think. Yeah, I'm gonna move it. I'm just gonna start cutting. Honestly. Okay, and then the petticoat will also get cut away at the end, but. good and then we'll just have it match on this side we'll measure and edge and it'll match but i think actually this right here I'm putting down the scissors before I go too crazy. Um, let's get a close up. Really chopped it up, and obviously the petticoat will not will not be there. It'll also get cut up with the final skirt. But I think it's looking pretty good. Um, the back probably needs trimmed, but I'm gonna wait on that one until we have like this final side seam because this side seam is fucked. I like that edge. Now I need to figure out, because I have this cut, I can figure out how wide the ruffles are gonna be here and then how wide they're gonna be there. So time to do math. We know how this went last time, so wish me luck. Okay, I'm gonna measure to my actual line. Um, and then we're gonna do some math. And then I should measure the whole hem on that side and then subtract this. And then I'll have the final math, so yeah. 14 and three quarters. Someone write that down, write that down. Oh, I have a whiteboard, we can do math on a whiteboard. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's just like stuck. Maybe we're not doing math on a whiteboard. It was a cute idea for three seconds, but I can't get the freaking marker off of it. Okay, scrap paper. Who's got scrap paper? Let me run through my trash. Scrap paper. Okay, what did I say? I told you to write it down, 14 and three quarters. Okay, and then the other side. 34 and a half. Okay, let's do math. I gotta stop standing under this light. It makes the lighting terrible. Okay, math. So I need a calculator. Um, okay, so our top section and our bottom section. So um, we're doing math with pictures because it always helps me. Our top section is gonna be 14 and three quarters. And then our bottom section is gonna be 29 and, no, yes, no. Oh my God, 29, 19, 19 and three quarters. Okay, I couldn't decide if it was 19 and a quarter or 19 and three quarters, even though I said 29 and I wrote down 29. I know what I'm talking about, okay? Okay, so this is our full, this is our half. This is what our skirt is gonna look like. Not really, but okay. And then I want to take 14 and three quarters. That's not math. Five, seven, five. And I need five sections, I think I decided. One, two, three. Hang on, let's look at my sketch. So it's two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. I swear it's nine sections in total. 
That's what I count at least. So it's five on top and four on the bottom, and the four on the bottom are slightly longer. So that's what I'm gonna go with. Divide it by five, divide it by four. Got it? Okay. So 14.75 divided by five is 2.95, which I wanna say is like two and seven eighths. 2.95, 2 and 19 twentieths. So we don't have twentieths. We have 16, sixteenths and 30 seconds. So I'm gonna go with 2 and, what is, um, it's like 2.925 is 7 eighths, right? Nope, 2.9, 2.9, 3, 5? What is it? What is 7 eighths? What is 7 eighths? 0.875. Okay, I think that's close enough. So we're gonna do 2 and 7 eighths inch, which actually doesn't seem very big. Very, very pequeño. Um, but they're rough, like super choppy. So I say we bump it to, th I'm gonna bump it to four because they're gonna get chopped to bits. Okay, and then the bottom ones are 19.75 divided by four. four yeah, 4.9, so they're much bigger. Okay, wait, but let's see, 4.93. Seven five, so I think we're also gonna bump that to seven eighths. Or actually, you know what? Let's do fifteen sixteenths. How about? Might as well do five. But then if I divide that by five, and we do five ruffles on the bottom, three and seven eighths. So we'd be jumping from this size to from this size for the first one to this size for the second one. So like this big to this big, from three inches to four inches. Which actually, honestly, and then if we bump, I'm gonna bump it to, let's see, we're bumping an inch. I'm gonna bump an inch and a half. We're gonna bump to five and a half. We did freaking math. Okay. Okay, now the length of them is another thing. So, and also the positioning. So we're gonna do the original position, the original, okay. Okay, here's my math. So this is the original number, this is what we're bumping to. This is gonna be the spacing. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, spacing, how far apart they need to be spaced. And then the, the size, how far apart they need to be spaced, and then the size. And we're doing five. Both. So there will be 10 ruffles in total. These ones at the top, these ones at the bottom. And then after they're all on, when we're weathering, we'll go through and we'll kind of chop them up because I one the one on the back on the top has like a point to it almost. So I'm gonna take the dress off and the pat the the sample off, and I'm gonna measure out spacings and mark them with my eraser pen and then we're gonna go from there and see how we're feeling but I think we're like really close to wrapping up this episode actually like the fitting and like trimming the skirt and everything went really well so I think I also decided how I want to finish the petticoat but we'll probably do that when we're making the dress just because like I don't want to get out all of the stuff and do that math after doing this math okay the first thing that I do is I pin my side seams completely flat so that they can't move. I also know that the front and back are the exact same size, or they should be, so I should only have to do this once and then I can transfer it to the back. I get everything as smooth as I possibly can and then I decide to pin up the back as well as pinning the waist together so that it's absolutely as flat as I can possibly get it to get an accurate measurement.
I pull out my math and I start tracing our halfway line, basically just the line that I decided was the length of the top section. After I got that line down, I started measuring out the next lines. I measured everything from the waist. It's just easier for me. I'm also measuring with the ruler for now because I find that easier than with the tape measure. This is also super inefficient. You'll see I find a much better way to do this later on. This is me just working through the math inch by inch of how far from the waist each section is going to be just because I feel like I'm going to get a more accurate measurement than measuring each one from the last line. Okay, I did math of where each one is going to be laid and it, wait. I don't need this one because this counts as one of the bottom ones. Okay, I'm done. Wait, no, that's going to count as one of the top ones. And then we can only have four on the bottom. Okay. My math went wrong somewhere. Put a thunk. So those are top five measures. Oh no, wait. No, okay, this is one of the bottom ones because one of the tops is zero. Okay. I forgot about our waist at zero and okay, so we have five and five. Okay, these are our measurements just because it's easier to measure from the waist out than from each one down. You get me. Okay, the front is all done. I'm gonna make sure that it's all even and then I'm gonna flip it over and copy the dots onto the back. Okay, I have the lines done on both sides. So now I'm gonna take my tape measure and I'm going to just basically get the basic measurement for each of the lines. And it should be the same on both sides, so I'm only gonna take it on one side and then we'll just have to remember to double it um, so that it's the full size. And then we're gonna debate um, how intense the ruffles are gonna be. Yay! When I'm taking this measurement, I'm basically trying to walk only one side of the tape measure around on the lines. Just because it is a round measurement, I'm only walking the side that has the measure marks on it. So the longer ones that have like the ripped edges, I'm just gonna take the measurement from like the furthest point. Um, so like where this one, it is longer on the back than it is on the front. So I'm gonna start the measurement from here and I'm just gonna make that the final measurement because it's fine if we end up with excess ruffle, but then it sucks if we don't have enough. So you can see like it's it's consistent until like here probably and then it's like up and down and all over the place because of the tears but now we have these so let's just go find like final measurements and then i think i'm gonna go for like a doubled on the ruffle oh yeah there, i mean there's a lot of freaking ruffles that we're gonna do but i think i'm gonna go for a doubled measurement so i'm gonna just go do that math now we've done enough math this episode okay these are my numbers so these are the base full measurement and then I did times one and a half and then I did two times because I started doing two times and I was getting some really scary numbers. More than likely I'm going to end up going with the one and a half and then I'm probably going to hate myself. But it's better than going with the two and not having enough material and then not being able to finish the dress before the convention. Because I'm looking at this like 202 number and going, <laughs> yeah, that's like 20 inches of material that I just don't have. 
yeah, those are the numbers I'm gonna go with. Um, now what I wanna do, now that I have my math all done, is I'm going to take the skirt back off of the bodice again, and then I'm going to start making, like, press this all out, make sure, like, all of the lines look good, make sure, like, take kind of this measurement that I need to add on here, yada, 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 to turn it into a pattern, because uh, next episode we start the real thing. Yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna start unpinning then. I always hit record and then I'm just like actually not ready. There's always just so much footage at the beginning of me just going, wait, I didn't grab this. Wait, I, I need to walk over here and do something. After I took everything apart, I pressed everything very nice and flat, especially the seam allowances that may have gotten a little warped from being on the dress form for so long. I also made sure to measure the center back down seven inches so that I had extra room for the zipper to go in behind the skirt. As I'm taking everything apart, I'm also making sure that every seam that doesn't have an accurate seam allowance is marked correctly on both sides so that I know exactly where it was sewn. So it makes it easier for me to add the correct seam allowance and then trim away any excess. I'm also making sure to double check and double mark any of the notches that are on there that might get missed otherwise. Hmm, let me just take out my AirPod, actually. Don't need that right now. Okay, we have a pattern. We have a plan to finish the petticoat. And I think that's it for this episode. So like if you liked it, comment if you have any questions or if you thought it was helpful. I love answering all of the comments and questions. I love helping people out on their journeys. And I'm trying, I'm trying to stop all of the gatekeeping. I want everyone to have the most information and like support and tutorials that they possibly can on their cosplay journeys. Like, comment, subscribe. You can always unsubscribe later. It's free. It costs you nothing. Yeah, so next next time is it's the big one. Making the whole dress. Okay, wish me luck.